Hey, how are you? I'm Andrew at St. Croix Cards, and this is On the Road to the World Cup, powered by Slab Stocks. And I cannot believe that we are this close to the World Cup kicking off in Qatar. How crazy of a last 10 weeks has it been? It has been so fun, so enjoyable to break down these groups, to talk about every single team. Well, maybe not every single team, but players, predictions, where we think uh, countries are going to come out of what groups do we see as being the toughest groups man it has been so fun to break this down now today I want to do just really kind of look at predictions you know players that I think are going to perform well at the World Cup now if you're listening to this on the day of release we are one day away it is coming tomorrow and I thought we would just jump in and talk about my prediction of some of the major awards that are going to be given out at the end of the tournament. But we can't start without a little bit of injury news, right? This has been a theme in the 10 weeks. Who is not going to be at the World Cup. And it was super unfortunate. I was super excited to watch Christopher Nkunku play for France. And there were rumors going around and I was reading some stuff that he wasn't going to play in the central role, that he was actually going to see some midfield time with all of the injuries uh, to Conte and to Paul Pogba. And, and so I was super pumped to see what he was going to do. Picked up a knock in training. Apparently, if, if, am I reading the, if I'm reading it correctly, it was a, a Camavinga challenge that causes him his, his injury which means Nkunku is no longer going to represent France at the World Cup. Now that means that they can go back to those 55 players uh, in those provisional rosters and they can call somebody up. And they've called up Randall Kolo Muani from Frankfurt, Eintracht Frankfurt in the Bundesliga. This guy has had a really, really good year. He's been in form. He's 23 years old. He's had five goals and nine assists in 14 games in the Bundesliga this year. You know, a goal, a goal or a a, a a goal or assist every game. That's pretty impressive numbers. He's also added two goals in six games in the Champions League. So he's getting called up. Now I don't know how much he's going to see, what you know, what how much playing time he's going to get for France, but he is now on that 26 man roster. He will represent his country. Really incredible stuff for him. Really unfortunate for Nkunku, but I'm going to be kind of excited. I kind of looked around too. He doesn't really have any cards. He's got some stickers out there. I believe before he was at, uh, in the Bundesliga, he was in league one in France, uh, but not much is out there. And of course you're not going to find him in NT or prison. This is kind of a late ad and nobody really expected him to make the 26. So one more injury for you. One more guy who's not gonna play in Qatar and for me I was super excited about this one but I really want to get into this you have arrived at your destination and how cool is this I feel like we've been talking about this for a very very long time Lou Sale Stadium the place that the final is going to be on December 20th but we have so much football to play before we get there. And I mean, I cannot wait for the four games a day for people to be talking about performances. And I just start to, in, you know, it gets me thinking, what are those iconic moments going to look like in this World Cup? You know, I, I still hearken back to, you know, uh, Robin Van Persie, the Flying Dutchman, that header that goes in. Uh, in and, and, you know, like those are the moments that we, we still talk about. You know, the Zidane headbutt, and, you know, the red cards that we've seen in the past. You know, we, we still talk about the World Cups that Pele has won. We're going to create those iconic moments here in this World Cup. And, and I, my hope is that so many more people are going to come along for the ride. So many more new football fans are going to come into the space and say, you know what? This is amazing. This is truly the beautiful game. But one of the things that they do at the FIFA World Cup, and you know, like we've just gotten through like the Ballon d'Or, the awards ceremony season for soccer, but 
they give out certain awards and I just wanted to highlight a few guys, many of them we've already talked about, you know, and so some of this is rehash, but who do I think is going to be in line for some of these major awards? Now these awards haven't been around since the 1930s. You know, some of them are just kind of more recent, you know, eighties, nineties that they're giving out these awards. But one of the awards they give out is the golden glove award or golden gloves award for the best goalkeeper of the tournament. And one of the people that I think is, is going to be in line. If Portugal is going to make a deep run in the world cup this year, I think it's going to come down to, to how well Diego Costa plays. Now this is the 23 year old goalkeeper from Porto. He's made some incredible penalty saves in the champions league. He's been playing extremely well and he is looking to be the number one keeper for Portugal, 23 years old, you know, his evaluation and, you know, transfer values that I'm seeing is upwards of 60 million. Uh, and, And so he, he's quite the talent. Now, some of the stuff that he has is, is very limited. Uh, NT, National Treasures, he's got some cards in. He's in the new uh, P- uh, Panini World Cup prism. Uh, what you're seeing there is the pink, or if you're listening, the pink short print, the one per box. Uh, that, that pink card sold November 12th for $40. Now, just kind of to give you perspective, uh, you know, don't look at that and be like, wow, a goalie is selling for $40. That's partially, you know, new product. You know, that this World Cup prism has just come out. So you do tend to see prices, you know, a little bit higher. He is a goalie. You know, goalies don't always tend to hold their value over the long term. So just be kind of mindful of that as well. He's also an NT. Uh, his rookie card out of 99 sold for $65 on October 30th. These are both raw sales. The product is relatively new. People haven't had a chance to grade them at, at all. But if you're looking for, you know, and again, maybe the, the price isn't, all that bad because he's really only in a few products. You can't go out and and get other cards of him. You might have a few stickers out there too, but again, those those are two very different things. So Diogo Costa is one of my guys who I'm watching, and then the second one uh, is Allison. Uh, and I think you know for Brazil, Brazil is one of the favorites to win the tournament. He is going to to be in goal for them, and I think he again, you know, you don't win the World Cup if you don't have great goalie play. And so Allison is going to be called on. He's a, you know, plays so, so well for Liverpool and, and he's got a lot of stuff out there. You know, you just kind of, kind of have to do your own research and look, you know, 2019, 2020 obsidian. He has an auto out of 149. Uh, this sold July 12th. So a little bit, a little bit older of a sale. So in the summer there for $92 and 16 cents, that's raw. And then uh, he has the red prism from 2018, World Cup. Now that's number to 149. This is a PSA 10 and this PSA 10 sold for $300 in April of this year. Uh, so not a whole lot of goalie sales, not a whole lot of goalies, uh, you know, in the presses, but I wanted to give you an idea that you can find Alice and you can find some autos. Uh, he does have some, some kind of short, uh, you know, number, his numbered stuff from 2018. Uh, but there's, there's quite a bit out there. So just kind of, you know, look, but, but I would love to know, you know, who do you think is going to be that golden glove winner golden gloves winner here in the tournament could be any of these two guys you know another name that comes to mind is tb uh katwa uh he for belgium he could do do some stuff there's just so many out there you know i would love to sit there and say you know matt turner could you know you know do some things in in goal and you know represent arsenal and represent the u.s men's national team you know there's so many goalies out there but i think these are two guys that kind of rise to the top as we look at quality and and the possibilities of of just fantastic goalie play the next award that does go out uh, to, to the top goal scorer is the Golden Boot. And the reigning Golden Boot winner is the one, the only Harry Kane. Uh, Harry Kane scored six goals in the 2018 World Cup and won the Golden Boot. And it's interesting to note, you know, I, you know I'm a, a former history teacher, so I kind of love the, the history of, of the game. 1978, since 1978, there has only been one Golden Boot winner to score more than six goals. We got a couple at five. Every other has been six. The only player to score more than six goals in a World Cup since 1978 is Brazilian Ronaldo 
and he did it in 2002. So he had eight goals in the tournament, and he won the Golden Boot. Uh, but, but my question is, does Harry Kane repeat this year as Golden Boot winner? And if he does not repeat, who do you think – is going to win the golden boot. A lot of different options, you know, tons of strikers out there. And we've talked a lot about all of those attacking players, but here, Harry Kane, you know, I, I brought up not only his index, I love card ladder pro. I love card ladder for all of their data. They do such a great job with their graphs. And I, and I, and one of the things that just stuck out to me is, is kind of Harry Kane's market. And looking kind of at, you know, just the steady decline in his market as as the year has progressed, you can kind of see, you know, what's been happening to his index, which is surprising to me. I mean, he's he's having a great year in the Premier League in scoring goals. I believe he's at double digits. The only person that is in front of him in the Premier League for goal scoring is Erling Holland, and he is on just a different level and how he's scoring goals and he's scoring goals uh, for fun and, and in bunches. Uh, but the one card that I have here, this is a 20, 2019. This is the Kaboom uh, PSA 10. Uh, it sold for his last sale was $706.31 on October 14th. Uh, but one of the things, you know, I'm just interested to you know, how does he come out and play uh, in England? England's taken a little bit of, of heat for not, not really playing well leading up to the World Cup. Uh, but they do have some great young talent, you know, Harry Kane uh, in the center in that striker role. You know, you got Bukayo Saka, you got Phil Foden, you got Mason Mount, you got so many, you know, Jude Bellingham, Declan Rice. You've got so many players that could can really find him the ball. Um, you know, I you know I love I love the ability that the wingers in England have to get the ball in the center. His heading ability is is going to be on display, and I think that they are going to do well. I, you know, in a group with the United States, uh, I think that his ability to head the ball, his you know his aerial ability, could come into play uh, that day after Thanksgiving when uh, England and the United States face off. Uh, but I think he has a chance to really uh, to kind of put on a show again at the World Cup. A couple cards out there. The one I've already talked about, I, I really do like the early stuff, uh, you know, pre-2017. Uh, his 2014-2015 Topps Premier Club, uh, this is a PSA 9, uh, the future star. This uh, is a uh, kind of that earliest card, maybe even that. I don't think he has too much before this. This could be the rookie card, $205.38, sold October 16th. And then if you're interested in, you know, you know, out there and you're saying, you know what, I think Harry Kane is a, uh, a striker that is going to go down in the Premier League history. Uh, he puts in goals, you know, he's put in, you know, hundreds of goals. I think he's second or third on that list for all time Premier League goals already. And you're saying, you know what, I just want an auto uh, of Harry Kane. You can find them and you can find them for relatively cheap, you know, tops, uh, the Merlin 2021, 2022, he has, has autos in there. One just sold raw on November 12th for $45 and 11 cents. You can get a Harry Kane auto, uh, raw that is out of Merlin for less than $50. The other kind of golden boot nominee for me uh, is, of course, Messi. Messi has has been in form, has been playing very, very well for PSG. So looking at his index again, you can see he has 98 cards in that index. Uh, and he's actually down a little bit, but it's almost this flat line. You haven't seen really anything to change. And I, and I, and you know, that, that was a little surprising to me thinking he playing so well, leading a, an Argentinian team that is primed you know, to, to be in the conversation, uh, you know, to win the world cup and here Messi is, and you haven't seen a whole lot of movement on his cards. Uh, and, and one of the things that I really think is important to, to kind of talk about is just, you know, how, you know, how Messi, Ronaldo, Harry Kane, a lot of these guys have, have cards that date all the way back to 2015. A lot of people are looking at the here and now. Now I do really love the prophecy fulfilled out of, out of Merlin this year. Uh, his gold refractor out of 50, uh, this is Messi's sold for $161 50 cents. That was November 13th. Uh, so there's some of that new, newer numbered stuff, but I love that you can still dip back into some really great sets, you know, 2015 uh, Donruss, you can go 2015 uh, select and you can get numbered Messi, numbered Ronaldo for, for relatively cheap. Now, you know, you've got to kind of be able to look at, you know, the, 
the quality of the card and the condition of the card, but this this camo prism from 20, 2015 Select out of 249, so a little bit higher, but out of 249, a Rossell November 13th for $66.36. So again, again, about $65, you can get a numbered Messi from 2015 Select. I think that's that's pretty great. Now the, the the next player that I want to highlight in this I, this conversation of the golden boot would be Vinicius Jr. Real Madrid. He has really had his coming out party in the last eighteen months and has played extremely well. But he is also uh, in that 2018-2019 Donruss set. Uh, he's got this optic. Uh, blue or not, it's not a blue, it's an aqua. His optic aqua out of 149 PSA 10. This is his rated rookie. Uh, just sold November 11th for $1,680. So pretty, pretty on the higher end uh, for, for Vinicius Jr. But if you're also, you know, interested in getting a rookie card, even getting a PSA 10, there are other parallels from that set. I threw up the, the red Press proof. Uh, this is a PSA 10, uh, not numbered, but uh, his PSA 10 just sold. Uh, and this is the Donruss just sold for $231.50. But I, I think for me, Harry Kane and Messi are, are kind of the, you know, they're going to be the, 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 the guys that are looked to to score the goals with Vinny Jr., there are so many attackers for Brazil. You know, everything that I've seen, Instagram, YouTube, you know, anything I'm reading, you know, online is just people are so impressed by the attackers that Brazil has. And it's, you know, you can't deny it. You can't not appreciate the fact that you've got Rafinha and Richarlson and Vinny Jr. and Neymar and Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus. And all of these guys are just going to be flying uh, for Brazil. You know, now not all of them can play at the same time, but I think it's, you know, Will will some of those goals disappear from Vinny Jr. and go to, you know, a Gabriel Jesus or a Martinelli or, you know, a Richarlson? Like where, you know, he might not be the only guy scoring goals, which is maybe one reason why I don't see him being kind of the leading candidate for the golden boot. But now not only is rookie card stuff, you can still find Vinny Jr. stuff. He's got auto, autos out there. You just kind of got to do a little research. I know he's got some in Top's Finest from previous years. The one that I put up is a Merlin Chrome. This is the auto the under under 23 or the U23 auto. It is a PSA 8, uh, but the auto is a 10, and that sold. And this is out of uh, 49. That sold November 6th for $157.50. Now, I know it's PSA 8, but you got an auto that's a 10, and it's out of 49. Uh, it's a pretty good card to me. And then his newer stuff, even from this year, uh, his 2021-2022 Donruss Optic uh, Orange Velocity, that's the, the Road to Qatar set, out of 49 The Roth copy sold for $66 on November 12th. So really a big range, uh, you know, thousands of dollars for that that Aqua rookie, uh, all the way down to you can pick up a an Orange Velocity out of 49 out of this year's uh, Donruss Road to the World Cup for, you know, out of 49 for $66. So a lot of options. And, and a lot of what I'm trying to do here is, you know, we got people who have massive budgets and they're looking for big cards. And then we're also have people who are just kind of coming into the space and saying, you know, how can I get involved? How can I get, you know, decent copies or how can I get, you know, a numbered card of these guys? So I'm just trying to give you guys that, that again, that idea of, you know, you know, here's, here's some budget options. Here's some high end options. And then it gets into, the FIFA Young Player Award. Now, I had to do a little bit of research because I know they give one out, you know, every year, every four years, they give out like the Young Player Award. And I was kind of looking to, to see, I wanted to know who qualifies for this award. And from what I could find out, you need to be 21 years old or under at the start of the calendar year of the World Cup. So this is a November World Cup. So that just means that you had to be 21 or under at the start of 2022. So there's a lot of names that then come to play because you could technically be 22 now, but still qualify for the FIFA Young Player Award. One of those players that, that does qualify, who's 22 at the moment, but is one of the best fullbacks in the world, is Alfonso Davies, and who is going to be representing Canada. And so he is one of my kind of 
I think that he could win this award. Now that's all dependent on what Canada does. They got to play Croatia. They got to play Morocco. They got to play Belgium. They've got a lot of teams that they've really got to tackle some good competition in their group uh, that we've already looked at and talked about. And I did kind of highlight his, his MLS cards, you know, his Vancouver white cap cards that are out there. Here's more of the flagship again, card ladder pro does such a great job with the indexes and the sale history of the cards. I love graphs. I love looking at numbers. I'm a visual person. So being able to see it in graph form is, in, is, is really important for me. Uh, but this is his, uh, this is that, that rated rookie, that optic rated rookie from 2018. It is a PSA 10, and the last one sold for $169.50. Now, it is a pop of $152. Uh, you know, I, I, I've I really only been in the soccer card space. You know, I don't spend a whole lot of time with football or basketball or baseball. I love uh, soccer. I love soccer cards. I love the soccer card community. So when I started to see pop counts, really when I started, I didn't really have any knowledge of how high pop counts were in other other sports. Now I'm starting to see like 152. That's extremely low. Now, you know, that's a low pop count. You're not just going to find these cards, you know, every which way and uh, you got to look for them, but here is his rated rookie and, and you can get that rated rookie for, for under $170, but you can also look at the graph. And, and this is why I think card ladder is so important. Uh, and I think it's so important to talk about just the cards in general, every player that we're talking about here, every player that we've talked about every team that we've talked about is to really you know look at the research and look at what is happening so here is you know that that graph and you can see that sharp increase you know really over the past week or two of Alfonso Davies's cards now for all of these guys for Messi for Neymar for you know for Ronaldo's for you know you fill in the blank with your favorite player we have 32 teams that are descending on Qatar and only one can win the World Cup. Now, it, it works in any, you know, World Series for baseball. It works Super Bowl for football. You know, the, the NBA championship for basketball. What happens when teams bow out of the playoffs? What happens when teams don't win the championship? Well, it tends to see their card prices, you know, affected by that. Now, will it be a, a super deep, deep decline or, you know, will it kind of stabilize, you know, we really don't know. We've never been in this type of card market for a world cup. You know, the world of cards looked very different in 2018 and looked even, even different, you know, soccer cards in 2014. So this is really the first world cup that we have, and it's a winter world cup. It's not even kind of typically how we see things go. So I would say like, if you're really big on Alfonso Davies and, and you want to go out and, and buy this particular card or another card, you know, I would encourage you to kind of look at pricing. And, and if you feel like it's getting too high, if you feel like it's, you know, it's, it's reached, you know, a height that you're not comfortable with, you know, the chances are that Canada is not going to win the world cup. You know, they've got a one in 32 ch chance to win the world cup, you know? And, and so if you don't think it's very likely, you, you know, maybe you, the, the educated thing to do is to just simply to wait, to see where, where Canada ends up. And it could, you know, and it could work out well for you. It also can work the re in the reverse, right? If if a team that you're like, well, I'll just wait to buy that card until they don't win the World Cup. Well, they could win the World Cup, and that kind of changes the dynamic as well. But Alfonso Davis is one of my big names to watch for that Young Player Award. Uh, the, ne the next one is Aurelian Ch uh, Chukmueni, the Real Madrid midfielder. Really think this guy is going to make, you know, he is going to be a huge reason how France does in the World Cup. You know, they've had so many midfield issues, uh, you know, with Pogba, with Conte, and, and a lot is going to ride on how well he plays in the midfield. And that's a tall order for a 22 year old kid. You know, you know, he's, he's 22. Of course he has to be because he qualifies for the young player award and, and he doesn't really have a whole lot of cards out there right now. He does have a Merlin, uh, you know, so he was in that Merlin set. Uh, he just got that big move over the summer when he went from uh, Monaco all the way to Real Madrid. But at 22 years old, he is a starter in at Real Madrid, and they had enough faith in him to sell or to to transfer Casemiro to uh, Manchester United. So there there is belief in this kid, and and he could really you know kind of use the World Cup to put his name on the map. 
just some pricing for you to kind of get your, you know, thinking about uh, Chukwueni is Merlin 2021-2022. This is his Blue Shimmer Refractor. This is out of 75, sold November 8th. Uh, for $70.99. Now, he is in the new World Cup prism, and his blue uh, his blue refractor, that it would be out of $299, uh, just sold November 11th for $79. That was really close to release, so again, take that for what you will. But I really like the blue uh, refractor, and, and if you're if you're listening, you, you can't see the screen, and if you're watching, you know, I, I, I do personally love color matches, and you kind of, you have that blue refractor with uh, the French kit. I think it just looks really, really great, and, and so I, I, I do like that card a lot. But he is another one. Both of those are raw, but he is one to watch as we get rolling here with the World Cup. Uh, the third one, we, we you would be remiss to not talk about Jude Bellingham and and his ability to uh, not only you know play well for for Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga, but he's going to have an opportunity to represent his country. Uh, and as a teenager, you know he definitely would qualify for the Young Player Award. Just a couple of cards that are out there for him. You know his 2020 tops finest. This is his Green Wave. This is out of 99, so a little bit shorter print run. This is an SGC. Uh, 9.5 sold for $130. Uh, if you are watching this, you know, you can see a lot of this stuff, you know, for me personally, what I've really come to appreciate is, is the color uh, with an SGC slab. Uh, you know, as, as you, you want your cards to pop, you want your cards to look good. And when you have some great color, well, it's green or blue or reds or even like golds or, you know, super fractors, like seeing them with the black in the, in the tux in that SGC holder, it just looks really, really good to me. It's aesthetically pleasing. And so I, I love that, that, that card that, you know, the, the Bellingham, the green with the black background just does a lot for me. And then the other card that I put up here is his, one of his uh, Sapphire rookies from 2020, 2021, uh, Tops Chrome Sapphire. It's the Aqua, which means it would be numbered out of 150. And that sold November 12th for $202 and 50 cents. It will be interesting to see how Gareth Southgate uh, uses the midfielders for England. Uh, and I, you know, you've got a lot of options there and, and it'll be definitely interesting to see how he lines up, how he sets up and where, where Jude finds his place. Cause I mean, you've got, I mean, Kelvin Phillips did make the team. There was a lot of rumors. We talked about that in the injury that he was going to miss the world cup. Phillips is there. Declan Rice is there. Mason Mount is there. Uh, Phil Foden is there. You know, you, you Jude Bellingham's there. There's so many midfielders that are available now. Who do you slot in? But I think he has to, but just the way he's played at Dortmund and, and the ability that he has, you got to put him in there and let him see what, you know, you know, I think you just kind of let him go and, and let him play. You know, I think a lot of the national teams that, that I've been watching, the England's, the U.S. men's national team, it almost feels like they're playing tight or they're trying to play into a system where, you know, you just got to find your playmakers, give your playmakers the ball. You know, you're never going to see in Argentina, you know, we play this system and, you know, Messi has to play into that system. No, you're going to get Messi the ball and let Messi do what Messi does best. And that's create and that's to score goals. So I think you've got to play your best players. And at this point, I think Jude Billingham is one of the best players that England has. Uh, you know, one of the, he does have autos out there too, so you can find them. I've kind of been kind of moving or, you know, a lot of, a lot of the buying that I have done is, is not Jude Bellingham autos. No, no. Uh, but I, I have been much more, you know, intrigued by the autos uh, as of late. Uh, and this is his, his rookie auto out of Merlin 2020, 2021. Uh, this would be the blue auto out of 75. It is a PSA 10, November 10th. It did $766 and 51 cents. So a very, very strong sale for Jude Bellingham and uh, for a kind of a shorter printed auto. Last one we got to talk about. And I think, you know, I've been talking about him for a while uh, is, is Musiala and Jamal Musiala for Bayern Munich. This, this kid is, is special. I think this, he is, he is going to do great things at this world cup. He was very early on, you know, even before the Bundesliga started, I thought, you know, he was going to be the one, if anybody was going to break out, if anybody was going to kind of rise to the top in that Jude class, it was going to be Musiala and he is not disappointed. You know, he is, he is, I think the last time I checked, he had 20 goal involvements in the Bundesliga and the next closest one uh, for, for a teenager or for someone under 21 was 10. And that was Jude Bellingham. So he is playing extremely, extremely well. And I think he is going to be 
the, the pivot. I think he's going to be in central focus for Germany at the World Cup. So I'm super, super pumped to see Musiala uh, at the World Cup. And I'm even more pumped if you go back to the episodes where we talked about Group E and we kind of highlighted Spain versus Germany. I cannot wait for that game. Musiala, Gavi, Pedri, all coming into the midfield. Who is going to kind of be that? Who, who's going to rise to the top? Who's going to outperform who? Uh, and that is going to be a huge, huge game in Group E. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. A couple of cards. Uh, there's many others that you can find. And the, and the thing that, you know, now that they're, you know, we have 21, 22 cards. So you can get those second year cards, even some really, you know, short numbered cards uh, for for the, not as expensive as, as the rookie cards themselves. But this is Topps Chrome. This is an SGC 9.5. This is, you know, the purple mini diamonds numbered to 250. Uh, this sold November 13th for $65. Now I know the number, the serial number, you know, being out of 250, that's a pretty high number, but it's it's out of 250. It's a numbered rookie pink uh, purple mini diamonds of Musiala, and you can still pick those up. I know it's a nine five, but it's and not a ten, but for under seventy dollars. Like the, to me, how he's playing, and you know, that would be a card that you know I wish wish I would have caught you know, on the 13th, because that might be something that I, I might've been in on it. And, you know, it was a best offer too. So somebody offered that up. So I think, you know, there are values out there. You, you can find cards uh, and numbered rookies of Musiala and it, it may not break the bank if you, if you were interested. Now, the, some of the, the, you know, the, the, the lower numbered stuff does tend to, to kind of the price, of course, goes up. Uh, his 2020-2021 Stadium Club, this is the green-yellow electric out of 75. This one is a PSA 10. This sold November 13th, so same day, sold for $560. Last award that is given out. So, you know, those are your four. Take your pick. Or maybe you have someone that you're like, man, you know, I think Pedri is going to win the young player award. Uh, but of, of those four, you know, so we've, we've looked at those four, you know, I would really love to know, like, who do you think uh, could come out of those four and win the young player of the year award? Now, the last award that they give is the golden ball award, and that is for the best player of the world cup. Now there are so many options that you can pick. There's so many players that, that you could choose from now golden boot does not necessarily dictate that you win the golden ball you know harry kane did you know won the golden boot but did not win the golden ball in 2020 or in 2018 excuse me i think the only time toto did it uh for for italy i believe and it was uh what world cup would that have been in was that uh, early 90s uh, that he won the gold he's the only player to win the golden ball and the golden boot. But one of the guys that I think is going to, to be in the running for the golden ball for best player of the tournament, that would have to be Neymar. Uh, Neymar, I think on this Brazilian team, who is going to be really uh, one of the favorites. Uh, he has been playing well this year. He seems to even be, you know, he's got a, he's laser focused and he's been playing very, very well in league one for PSG. Tons of stuff out there, tons of cards out there. You can go all the way back to 2014 Prism World Cup. His signature auto in that set, now that is a base auto. It is raw, sold November 12th for $350. But I throw that out there not because people are like, oh, it's a base auto from 2014. What are you doing? You know, take that, that card from that iconic set of 2014 Prism and then just kind of compare it to some of the stuff that's, you know, you know out of 2022 World Cup Prism and kind of, you know, do the math and, and see – you know, are the prices that things are going for in 2022, you know, will they stabilize? Will they come down, you know, after the product release and after, you know, that that excitement that people have to to World Cup Prism when that goes away, you know, what, what you know, what's left over, you know, where do the prices sit? So I love, you know, 2014. I, I do always kind of look to 2014 Prism. I, I love that that flagship, that first Prism World Cup set. Neymar's got some other things. I am a I'm a die cut person uh, when it comes to some of that 2016 2017 select. I really love the die cuts in that set. It's such a different die cut, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I really I think it's just appealing, you know, aesthetically to me personally. Some people don't like the die cuts. They're like, nah, get those away from me. Uh, but for me, I love it. This is the green one. This is out of sixty. Uh, this no sold November thirteenth raw for $115. So that's some of the early Neymar stuff. And then even in this, you know, you know, so this is what I was talking about in, in pricing, right? You can get a, a base 2014 world cup signature auto for $350, you know, or you can, 
get one of the, the international ink cards from this 2022 World Cup Prism. Uh, this would be the third edition of World Cup Prism. This sold November 13th for $200. So if you were to ask me, you know, do I want an international ink Neymar Auto from 2022 or do I want the 2014 Auto uh, out of World Cup Prism? I'm, I'm going to default. I'm going to go uh, with the 2014 Prism, even if it's a couple, you know, a hundred or hundred fifty dollars more. Like that's more, I think, the the staying power. That's the first auto of Neymar in Prism World Cup, uh, and so I think that that you know, longevity wise, uh, for me, and, and for me, it's not you know, it's not quick flips. It's not you know, I'm going to get this card. And I'm looking to sell it. You know, when Neymar wins, like a lot of the stuff I buy, I I become attached to it. You know, I you know, I either find it on eBay or I buy it at a show. Like it has a story to me, and maybe some of you can relate to that. You know, where it's it's difficult for me sometimes to, you know, I get this card or I find this card or I trade a lot to get into a card. And then I'm like, man, this card is so great. I'm going to hold on to this card forever. You know, people don't understand how much it took to get this card. Uh, and, and then I don't want to let it go. And I don't want to let it go at all. So uh, for me, I'm more of the nostalgia. I'm more, you know, soccer community. Like I love the cards, but the cards have always been an avenue to have conversations about soccer and about the Premier League and about players and and just to to meet like-minded people. And, and you know, I, I think the numbers are great and I always want to make educated, good financial decisions when I'm buying cards. Uh, but my pocketbook is not, you know, astronomical. I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to go and, and spend on cards. So I'm very particular in what I buy. And so for that instance, like I would probably shy away from the 22 version and 2022 version and go with the 2014 version, even though it would be a little bit more, I think it would be a better, uh, a better purchase for me. If I'm, you know, if I want to name our auto that I'm going to hold for longer than just the the 30 days of the tournament. And that's, that's a lot of what, you know, what I'm, what I'm saying too, is a lot of the guys that we've talked about, you know, I, it, yeah, I hope that they perform extremely well. I hope everybody does. It's a dream for these guys to go to the world cup and, you know, to, to perform to the best of their ability. But a lot of the guys that I'm, I'm super excited about, you know, I'm going to be excited about them on December 21st. I'm going to be excited about them on December 25th. And I'm going to be excited about them four years later when they're here in the United States. And we're, we're, we're having a World Cup cycle here in Canada, United States and Mexico. So here it is, right? We have arrived at your destination. You, we, are, we are on the verge of World Cup soccer for the next month. I cannot tell you how incredibly excited and blessed that I have been uh, to be in this situation, to have these conversations with you. I, I do want to thank all of you for reaching out. You know, I, I've gotten so many messages. I've gotten so many just pop-ins to say, hey, thanks. Uh, you know, and I'm glad that you guys have had an opportunity. I hope you learned something in all of this. I've had a blast you know, putting these together and, and putting these, you know, putting the, the talking points together and hoping that I can give you information that you can, can use down the line. You know, I, I work pretty hard on the, uh, the prism world cup checklist, because again, for me, it's all about the community. Uh, it's all about, you know, you guys and you guys, you know, one of the things I thought of when that world cup prism came out, I'm like, it's such a big set and people love it so much. I really want to, you know, be able to provide something that is going to save people time one, but also educate them because I think a lot of the checklists that we go and find, it gives you the player's name and maybe their country. And, and so I hope that you found it useful that it gives them, you know, kind of gives you their ages, uh, tiered the rookies, you know, before the, the product dropped. So, you know, I'm sorry about some of the guys that got rookie logos that I don't think should have gotten rookie logos, you know, you know, Noah Lang being one of them. Uh, but but I hope that that was helpful because then it gave you, you know, their parent club and, you know, where they're playing, you know, where domestically are they in Spain? What, what La Liga team? So I really tried to kind of pull all of the information together so that you can kind of get a good understanding of who is in the set, where they're playing and, and just age because that, you know, with, with information, because, you know, and education, you, you have the power to make really, really great choices. And, and our choices are our own, right? You know, the guys that I'm excited about, you know, the Harry Canes, you know, I know, I know he's a Tottenham player, but, you know, I'm excited for him in the World Cup. And I think he could, you know, perform pretty, pretty well here. But maybe you have other guys that you're like, no, I'm, I'm really big on Darwin Nunez. Or I think, you know, Julian Alvarez is going to be the young player of the tournament. But it'll all come down to 
that knockout stage, right? We got some really fun group play and, and it's going to come down to the knockout tournaments. So I thought, you know, if I'm going to give you my predictions, uh, you know, who do I think is going to win the world cup now uh, for, for a really long time, I thought, you know, the dark horse for me was Portugal. I thought Portugal really had a well balanced team. I think, you know, I thought that they were, you know, how they played and who they had on their team. It was a balance between really veteran leadership and some really exciting young talent that was going to be on Portugal. And I was pumped and I was like, you know what? I think that they could, you know, because the pressure, I mean, everybody's saying Brazil, everybody's saying Argentina, what's France going to do? How are they going to repeat? They've had all the injuries. There's a lot of pressure on other teams. And I really hadn't heard too many people, you know, putting the pressure on Portugal. And I think that sometimes is nice too. When you, when you walk in and you feel like, you know, almost like you got a chip on the shoulder, you know, nobody's talking about you but you think they should be talking about you. And so you're going to come in and say, you know, we've got a point to prove. The interesting thing, and I know I haven't, I haven't mentioned it in this entire episode. I, I'm really interested to see, you know, if the Ronaldo interview has any effect on, on how the dynamic changes with Portugal. I hope it does. And I hope they can kind of sit there, you know, you know, but there are, you know, there are players that, that, you know, Bruno Fernandes and Ronaldo play on the same team, you know, so that interview had, you know, might have some, some friction capabilities. Now, will it ultimately, you know, have, you know, the, the, the friction enough to cost them games? I don't know. I, I really don't, but, but I really, really, you know, we've, we've built up this world cup and we, you know, this world cup could be a great world cup. And I, the, the soccer, the football historian in me, you know, just starts to think, what if, Argentina and Portugal both win their groups. If Argentina and Portugal both win their groups, they would go to separate sides of that bracket. And we could only see them in a knockout game in the finals. And so for me, as, as a fan of the game, what would Argentina Portugal final do to the football soccer community as a whole, what would that do to the card market as a whole, as you pit Messi versus Ronaldo uh, for a world cup title. So one of these guys, you know, on their last world cup could, could walk away with a world cup victory. I, I don't even know what I, you know, do, would do with myself. I don't know what I would do. I think, I think we would all be going crazy if it was Messi versus Ronaldo for the world cup. And, and so that is what I'm hoping for, you know, as, as a fan, I'm hoping for that. If that's the case, you know, I think it's a toss up and I think I would love, I would love for Messi to get a world cup. I would love to see Messi uh, get a world cup. Uh, and if I, you know, I had to choose, I just think it would be so important uh, for the sport. Uh, and, and I think it would be, you know, get your popcorn ready. This would be the ultimate, like in a good way. I know I've used that as a negative throughout, but this would be epic and iconic and go down in history. And so that's why I want to see it. I want to see Portugal. I want to see Argentina. And it would be great to see. Argentina come out on top, but that's what I got. I could be very wrong. It's very possible uh, that, that, that is not going to be how things shake out, but I would love to know your thoughts. You know, I appreciate each and every one of you that have spent time, whether you spent five minutes watching, you know, the road to the world cup, or if you have been with us since day one, it has been a fantastic ride. I would not have wanted to take this road trip with anybody else. So Appreciate all of you. Would love to know your comments, your predictions, who you think is going to win the World Cup. Leave those below. But it has been so much fun. Thank you guys so much. Again, my name's Andrew at St. Croix Cards on Instagram. Thanks for taking the road trip with me. And you guys make it a great day. See you later.